Hmm? It's easy to make these decisions when you're not directly impacted. Absolutely. It's, it's the teachers that are on the front line. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Truth Reveal podcast. Yeah. Where I have my co host with me, Holly Harris. What's up? And April Rivers. Hello. And we are joined today with a very special guest, Miss Latanya Law. Wave at Yeah. Me. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> so. This is the Truth Reveal podcast where we host conversations that relate in order to reconcile as we reveal God's truth. And today we want to talk about some things that are very popular in um, culture right now with all of the things that are taking place in our society and in our nation and in our world globally with old Rona. Mm -hmm. Rona has shown her face again. <laughs> Uh, oh, Lord. She never left. She never really left. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she never left. But mm -hmm. we've often said how uh, Rona has really attacked every single system of our nation. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I'm talking health, legislation, uh, entertainment, every system, school, jobs, careers, everything has been impacted by Rona. So, mm -hmm. what we wanted to talk about today is the impact that the coronavirus has had on the school system and what appears to be a very hot topic right now, which is um, whether or not the school should be reopening, being that one, we do not have a vaccine, two, this virus is still um, running rampant as far as the numbers are continually to are, are continually increasing and we currently don't seem to have a handle on uh just kind of slowing down or even being stagnant with the way the virus is progressing so we invited uh, one of our friends on who we will um introduce a little bit uh later but that's essentially what we're going to be talking about. And before I went into my introduction of um, Latanya, aka Tanya, um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to give you guys some uh, facts and some information um, just doing a little research that I gathered. So I think it was July 14th. Um, our governor, Roy Cooper, governor of uh, the wonderful state of North Carolina, uh, made an announcement. Uh, stating that schools will be open, in case you was wondering. <laughs> They're going to be opening back up, get them mm -hmm. kids together. So obviously that sparked a whole uh, lot of conversation and talk um, amongst parents, amongst teachers, amongst school officials, superintendents, principals, everybody, even people who don't have kids like me. Yeah. We all got an opinion mm -hmm. <laughs> about this particular situation. So initially what Governor Cooper was saying that he wanted to institute, if I'm, I'm kind of going off memory, is three phases of this plan. So plan A is schools just open back up you go to school like traditional. Plan B is um, a hybrid plan. So we have remote learning, and then we also have where uh, maybe for X amount of days or X amount of weeks, the students can come um, into the school, the actual physical brick and mortar building. And then plan C um, gives the option to do completely remote learning. Now, he did give the districts the leeway to kind of make a decision about how they wanted to move forward, whether it was plan A, which you just come to school, we figure it out, plan B, which is that remote um, slash um, coming into the school on a part-time basis, or plan C, which is completely kids staying at home, we're going to do this distance learning, remote learning, virtual learning type of setup. So it seems like from what I'm hearing, um, I've talked to 
some people who are a part of the Mecklenburg school system. I've talked to some people who are part of the Cleveland County school system, which is the county in which I live in. Um, I've seen some um, documentation and information on, online about Wake County, which is the Raleigh area of North Carolina, um, where everybody's kind of adopting something different. So, um, what I wanted to talk to Ms. Tanya about as a seasoned educator is just one, her viewpoint as a teacher about how she feels about this, because not only is she a teacher, but she's also a mother. She has a child at school age herself and just kind of let everybody weigh in about this. Um, also, just to give a little bit more information before um, allowing Tanya to kind of introduce herself and um, bringing her up so the other thing that i thought was important was um i think around the same time maybe a couple of weeks ago and i don't have the date specifically um president trump did do a um, broadcast as well as he was accompanied by some individuals from the cdc um now i thought this was interesting because we're not trying to be very political. So there's been a little back and forth with the CDC um, director um, with his stance on, at some point, it seems as though he is not in support of the kids going back to school just because of there not being a handle on the disease. And mm -hmm. then there seems like in other uh, avenues I've heard where it's like, yes, yeah, okay, they can go back. So. We don't really know where Mr. Redfield lies, really. Oh, it kind of changes from week to week. That's just real talk. But the last thing that I have quoted that he stated, and this is a quote, um, he said, he being Robert Redfield, who is the director of the CDC, stated that having the schools actually closed is a greater public health threat to the children than having the schools reopened. So I was, um, okay. I was kind of surprised and shocked by that. Um, I by no means claim to be a biologist, although it was one of my favorite subjects. I don't know if that has to do with the fact that maybe if we're keeping the kids so isolated that they're not building up immune systems for the virus. I don't know. Hmm. But those were his words. He, this is above my pay grade. I just want to talk about it. <laughs> but uh, that's that what he said. So uh, I thought that was very, very interesting. Um, of course, you have the National Association, um, the National Education Association. Uh, these people are totally pushing back on this, um, mm -hmm. as well as I think the National Teachers um, Union. They're all like, no, nah, this is not what we plan for. This is not what we're going to do. So uh, there have been a lot of virtual meetings in between the National Education Association and the uh, National North Carolina Association of Educators. They're kind of working hand in hand, having some virtual meetings. Um, talking about the reopening plans and just things that can be done um, to address, I guess, a completely solely remote um, situation mm -hmm. as it pertains to the schools. Now, I know in other states, um, and this is just information from friends of mine that actually live in other states, so I have uh, friends in um, Florida, which Florida, like y'all going back to school, we won't hear it. Oh, no. <laughs> going back to school. Um, then you have New York is like, we doing everything distant. Y'all ain't even stepping foot on the bus. Yeah. So, you know, there's so many different varying <clears throat> degrees. And that is something that when I did hear the Secretary of Education, um, Devos, I always mispronounce her name, Devos, is it Devos or Devos? I do not I know. Knew, okay. Know. It's D E V O S. I guess, D, <laughs> you know, I don't know how, I think it's Devos, but anyway, she is our Secretary of Education. And when I did see her last week on the news, just talking about, you know, the importance of the children obviously being back in the school, she also stated that, you know, in support of our president, that they are, um, wanting the schools to be reopened um, and go back, Betsy DeVos, um, 
they do want the schools reopened. They do want the children back inside the school. But even she was stating that they're kind of leaving the the logistics to the states as it pertains to how they're going to go about doing that. So that's kind of like a very broad overview of where we are as a nation as it pertains to what what's going to happen with schools. So at this time, I would like to introduce none other than no. Latanya Long. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Yay! We all know Latanya because we're all UNC Charlotte graduates. Uh, woo, woo, go yeah. 49ers. Uh, Tanya and I were roommates <laughs> back in the day. Uh, I was at her wedding. She was in April's wedding. So we go way, way back. Tanya has been married to Mr. Rodney no. for Rodney. 15 years no. next <laughs> month. Yay. And she is the proud mother of Mason, <laughs> who will be starting second grade this year. Aww. And Fresh. she's also been teaching for a combination of 18 years, which I did not even know that. Wow. Um, so she looked 18. Jelly. Right, is that? <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Looking at 18. Teaching for 18. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, that's a good, that good black. <laughs> uh, and so I was very surprised to hear that. So Tanya was telling me that she's been teaching in the pre-K Head Start for most of those years. And then she just switched over to CMS, bless your holy and righteous name, um, oh. the past year and a half pre teaching our little kindergartners. <laughs> oh. So this is Miss Tanya. And so, you know, based off of everything that, you know, I kind of just covered telling you, and obviously, you know, way more than we do, being that you are one directly, directly impacted because you're one of the educators. Um, talk to us about, um, talk to us about one, what the experience was like back in March when everything kind of came to a halt and school shut down. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the struggle was real. Oh, the wow. struggle for a teacher and a parent. The struggle. Wow. I did not imagine that March 13th wow. would be the last day that we would be in the classroom, the last day I would see the students. Wow. I mean, come Sunday, we're finding out. Oh, you, school's closed. Kids not going back to school, but the teachers, wow. we had to report to come up with a plan for the first two weeks of school. So mm -hmm. we were in there hustling, bustling, trying to come up with two weeks worth of work for the kids to do at home. And honey, the struggle wow. was real. Wow. Then the remote learning kicked in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wow. fortunately for the younger kids, um, the kindergarten through second grade, um, the district developed learning packets for them so they could go to the schools, which had um, meal distributions. And one of our okay. schools was a meal distribution site. So okay. when they went to pick up the meals, the parents could pick up um, their learning packets. Mm -hmm. But um, let me tell you, that first month, <laughs> Wow. Me being home, trying to homeschool my own oh, child. Wow. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. it, it, it's difficult oh, trying to man. teach your own child. Wow. And then trying me to log in, get on, trying to teach my class. So I came up with a plan. I'm like, you know what? One day, Friday, I was like, Mason, today is a teacher work day. <laughs> <laughs> We ain't doing no school in the day. <laughs> that was my day for me to be able to get myself together, to do report cards, to do lesson plans, to come up wow. with activities, to do on Zoom. So I, I felt the parents. It, it, it was hard. It was difficult. And hmm. yes, I'm married and he still had to go to work. But the day he was off, it was just like, okay, some of Mason's assignments, some wow. of them were incomplete. Some of them didn't, didn't get turned <laughs> in. And I'm like, who can I complain to about this sub here? Cause yeah. it ain't <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. Yes, it was hard. And 
some of the activities, um, it was harder for him to do on the iPad. So I was like, okay, just use my laptop. So I came up with a plan. Like, Mason, you sleep in. I do all my Zoom meetings, all my classes. So 12 o'clock, that's my time to focus with you. Make sure you're doing all your work, get all your stuff done. And then we cool for the rest of the day. But yeah, this struggle was real. Wow. Tanya, <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a question when you when you said at the beginning that like on March 13th, and I, mean, I don't have a calendar in front of me, was it kind of a situation like over the weekend? Like when you said the third, so like, like on a Friday, they said you guys weren't coming back. Oh my. And the reason I remember <laughs> is because my son's birthday is March 13th. And that was the uh, last Friday that we were at school. And then it just went to remote learning, uncharted territory. Yeah. It, it was a lot to deal with. And, wow. and some of my parents, some of the kids, they weren't logging into the Zoom classrooms. Mm -hmm. They were with grandparents, with other people, aunts, aunties, whoever could keep them because yeah. their parents still wow. had to work. Had to and work. I knew that and I understood that, but I still wanted them to be able to be engaged and get some type of learning. Right. To mm -hmm. be, and so that I could see them like, okay, yeah. I could see you, you're doing well, other than. I did talk with them a lot on the phone, but I wanted to like see, see the face. Yeah. Let me wow. see you. So I can see how you're doing. Let me see yeah. you. Make sure you're doing good. How are you feeling today? Right. And so, yeah, so I understood why some of the parents didn't um, log in because they were at work. They didn't wow. have the time. I mean, and then some of the kids, the younger kids, they didn't have the devices. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, third grade and up, they gave them Chromebooks, so they were signed Chromebooks. But the young kids, the little babies, they yeah didn't have any technology used. And, wow. And, and you're thinking like five, six, seven. Even though, like, I have a five-year-old niece, and they know they know how to go on their little tablets and look at cartoons. But when you're talking about learning. There's mm -hmm. got to be somebody sitting down, kind of even guiding them on how to even use the tablet to, mm -hmm. I would imagine, getting right. the, um, the, the assignment. And it's funny when you were talking about that, I just thought about how, as a social worker, um, we used to always have, um, not always, but sometimes we did find, well, let me, let me preface this the right way. One of the things about the school system is the school system does a lot of reporting. Sometimes it's excessive, but they are odd. So the teachers are able to see their kids. You're able to see your babies. You know when they're having a good day. You know when something is off with them. You know when things are going on at home. And a lot of times the teachers and the counselors were the reporters. And so, you know, you take everything to this whole distant learning, remote learning, there's no eyes. Mm. on what's going on and so oh. you know you're you're probably going to get those increased uh neglect things or abusive things because the, the kids come to school and they tell yeah. so it's like on so many levels mm. like how this is just impacted you know so that's crazy wow especially coming from a title one school um which serves low-income children and families mm -hmm. Our school was a neighborhood school, so most of the kids walked to school. Good wow. thing our school, we had counselors, we had a social worker on site. Yeah. Um, we had BMTs, behavior modification technicians, so when kids were acting out, they could come in and support the kids, but yeah. still being mm -hmm. able to see them physically, to mm -hmm. know that, okay, they're okay. They're eating, they're getting fed. Yeah. They, getting taken care of they're not being neglected as soon as right right wow, wow. That's, mm. it's so much it's so much that is can i ask a question sweet sure, go ahead. Off here? No, yeah. go ahead. um tanya i want to ask this from the the health perspective before everything got abruptly stopped and we knew this disease was running rampant were y'all seeing an increase in like children calling out sick before we knew what was really going on? Like, did you actually 
you know how flu season, the teachers can already tell me what if my child were to get sick, yeah, we got about five or six kids, like all out of the classroom because they're all dealing with the flu. Were y'all seeing anything medically with the kids or not necessarily? Um, not necessarily. Like you said, regular flu season. I know a lot of teachers were out for sure. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And yeah. speaking with some of those teachers, they figured that like I probably had COVID back in December right. and January. Yeah. 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 They diagnosed me with an upper respiratory, upper respiratory. infection. Mm-hmm. So, yes. so yeah. it was yeah. just you know, just we were just thinking regular flu season, you know, yeah. kids, teachers out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. I, I totally feel you on that trying to uh, teach your own child because I tell you, I said, Lord, I don't want my child to be <laughs> safe, but I know if y'all tell me I got to do 100% at home, <laughs> my baby, Oof. Lord God, I, I, I'm like, I don't know if he's going to be prepared for the next level because uh, it, it, you know, mm. <laughs> I still have to work now. Thank God my job allowed me to work from home. But I had to produce at home. It was either going to be I was going to in the day I was going to just be teaching my helping my son because we didn't do the I wish they would have. They didn't do here in our county the Zoom classrooms where he could actually see his teacher and see the instruction, which I wish that would have been. They just basically just sent the packets home. Um, mm-hmm. And it was up to me as the mama to make sure he did the packets. And then they would call and do like a check-in or check-in on uh, uh, Dojo, you know, that type of thing. Um, but, yeah, a- after a while, it was just like, I'm going to take care of you later. Mommy got to work. I, I will make sure that you are ready for the next grade. <laughs> Help us. You know, mm. I got to, you know, it's Hold hard to handle this. You know, I know my poor baby. Look, he got three square meals a day. I was cooking my <laughs> <laughs> I was cooking he ate. Oh, like, that's, he ate. All you work, you. He ate. that's all he I can promise you. That's all I can promise you. You had to do what worked for you and your family. Oh, no judgment. Right. Yeah. Seriously, no judgment. <laughs> that's what I told people. Do what works for you and your family. You know how yeah. the household runs. I can't tell you how to function with multiple kids i don't have one at home so yeah my sister she had my niece was in head start so she's four she'll be starting kindergarten this year so when they you know when they went to the whole distance thing now mind you she had a four-year-old at the house a or four or five-year-old at the house a three-year-old at the house and a a four five-month-old newborn honey every night i would hear her talking about why you pick this book to read? You <laughs> <laughs> be hollering at my niece for picking a oh. long book. I don't know. I, we bless God the baby did pass, but I tell you, I was just like, this is not good. Wow. This is not good. Wow. Yeah. Because I mean. they had those packets to do. And I think, I mean, I think she was getting it done, but Every time I would go by the house, the babies would be outside just playing and stuff. They watching cartoons uh, all day. Like, she was she was on her. recess. They were they were on recess. I love you, Mia. If you listen to this, you're a good mama. Bless that. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. No, go <clears throat> I got a question. So how are you guys going to manage how to grade those individuals that <clears throat> either didn't have the technology, you know, parents were working so they couldn't help them with their homework. They kind of fell behind during this time. Like, how does that kind of come into play? Well, I know this past school year, um, we didn't do a report card for the fourth quarter. We did a, okay. a feedback form. Um, it had questions like, did they participate 50% of the time, less okay. than 50%? If they didn't, um, did they check in? Did, were you able to check in with them? <laughs> um, and so we just filled out the form, um, a feedback form based on what we saw through the fourth quarter, um, the parents, they could take pictures of the work the, from the work packets and send it to us so that we could see that they were doing the work. And so basically, I just had to base it off of what I saw during the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So <clears throat> some of the kids, they got used meaning unknown. I didn't oh, know because wow. wow. they didn't check in. So mm. I don't know if they develop. I mean, I remember where they left off third quarter, but fourth yeah. quarter, I didn't know. So we had to put wow. unknown because I couldn't give an answer if they were able to develop yeah. the skill or not. So, and wow. I, oh, sorry. I'm no, sorry. go ahead, April. Go ahead. It does make me, I hope I'm not getting ahead of sweet, but that's making me think about what the head of the CDC was talking about uh, when you, they mentioned that it would be more of a health risk to not have the kids go back um, for a couple, a few reasons. Mental health and just cause mm. what, having kids isolated one too long, I don't think it's a good for them naturally. Like I know mm -hmm. my younger son, even though I got two kids, but my younger one, he does much better in a setting where he sees other kids like working and doing work. It was a lot harder for me to try to just kind of hover over him to perform. And then the socializing, having other kids to be around and play with and actually seeing mm. the, and, and then seeing the teachers instruct and then the teachers of course seeing them. And I, and I could just only imagine for all the, <laughs> the, the homes that are, that maybe didn't have the technology or the parents are kind of not at the place where they'll yeah. check in or, or they'll, they'll fall behind. Like it's a lot to this to where if you get, say we all went to online, right? Every county in the nation. Think mm -hmm. about how many kids when it goes back to what quote unquote normal, the new normal where a vaccine is here or the disease basically we build some type of immunity and it's not doing the same death defying things that it's been doing um when we go back the children are going to be expected to be where they need to be to continue oh, yeah. on so that i i think i understand a little bit without him actually explaining what he meant by that like it's a lot to not having like there's a um school i forgot the name of it here in um our county uh where i live at that there's like a flashing light like you know the sign that they use when there's construction like slow down or whatever mm -hmm. there's a flashing sign saying parents please check in like they're having a problem where it's mm -hmm. like 50 percent of the they lost the kids wow. no check-ins they don't know their well-being they have not seen any work and they don't know what it's going to look like in the fall <coughs> to try to have some influx of kids that they haven't seen or if they it, it's, it's just a lot to this you know i i i kind of i i'm really praying for the school system really i'm praying for our counties because yes. what happened was our government i feel like they was like hey y'all figure it out Y'all yeah. 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 Let, let us know what y'all doing and, mm -hmm. and you know uh, we'll give you a few guidelines and I'm actually kind of glad that they left it up to the state but I wish the state had more of a uniform thing yeah. but I understand that counties work differently but it's like in, in my county we, we know nothing like I, I got a phone call today I actually called <laughs> the school and she was like we have all we know is plan A is off the table, so it won't be everybody in the school. And then we have plan B and plan C. And mm -hmm. and I was told that um, that to keep monitoring and looking at the website. And then I got a call today saying that, hey, uh, you know, we're still trying to make a decision. Like as for wow. as a county. And it is all of July 20 something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do I buy khakis or not? Like, my kid oh, was like, do I get <laughs> on about some uniform pants or not? Ooh, I was say something. Wow. Tell me something. Okay, anyway, mm. I've talked enough. Go ahead. No, no, that was good. Yeah. Because I was just thinking about, um, I was talking to uh, my cousin, and uh, well, I was talking to my cousin's wife, and he's, I was telling Tanya, he's a principal here in, um, in my county. And so in Shelby, they're do he's doing uh, kind of like uh, A and B type of schedule. So Monday and Tuesday is going to be basically half capacity at the school that he principals that he's the principal of. So you have half the students on Monday and Tuesday, 
I'm thinking Wednesday is like, a, I don't know, like a work day or off day or free day or whatever. And then maybe it's a, 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 bit, a virtual day. And then um, Thursday and Friday, the stu- you know, the other half of the students that come in. And we were just talking about this over the weekend. And, you know, like I said, I don't have um, any children. You know, I'm kind of adding commentary from just from family or whatever, from my nieces and nephews and kind of being exposed to what's going on with my sisters. But I was just thinking, you know, back in March, March 13th, Mm -hmm. when they were like, okay, schools are shutting down. I think that March, April, May, June, July, August, that's almost six months. Yeah, it just feels like, and you know, I say this loosely, and and extending grace because I don't know all of what goes on the big picture and the behind the scenes of trying to institute something so massive uh, for for the schools. Like this, this state has over, I think, like nine. I think it's got like nine million people in the state of North Carolina. It's a it's a pretty big state. So when you think about the school system and like how you're going to implement something, you know, like you were saying, April, but to me on the outside looking in, I think my worst case scenario would have been we can't go back to school in August because I would, I think, I think I would have tried to prepare for the worst case scenario being can't go back to school. What's going to be the plan? Mm-hmm. instead of leaving it up for the district because everybody is doing something totally different. Yeah. So Tanya, talk to us about the school district that you're in. What are, well, they, what are you guys going to do? Charlotte Mecklenburg <laughs> Schools made their decision on last, I think it was last Wednesday or last Thursday. Well, honey, it was a six hour board meeting because I sat there and watched it on Facebook. Wow. <laughs> And CMS came up with a plan B plus. Oh, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but <laughs> plan B plus is um, the students will go to school for two weeks. Um, it will be the kids will be broken up into three groups. So one third will go for three days, and the next third will go for three more days, and then the last third will go for the other three days for two weeks and then it'll be all remote learning august the 31st so the kids will be in there for two weeks divide up into groups but the teachers will be in there those whole two weeks okay so (laughs) yeah so what are you guys going to be doing uh one thing the parents they do have the option to choose remote only so okay cms parents if you listening you don't want your child to step foot inside the classroom you have until july the 26th to Ooh. sign up for remote only learning wow. meaning the first day of school august 17th your child will not be in the building at all so that's what cms has decided to do tanya i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off uh quick question what is when they're going to school those three days, what's going to be taking place? What are they doing when they're coming in for those two weeks? Um, the three days that they're there will be um, time for us to get to know the kids, the kids to get to know the teachers, um, for us to teach them how to use the devices so they gotcha. are able to learn how to submit their assignments, be able to do the discussion boards or whatever the teacher assigns. So. I, I understand that and I, I, I see why they chose that because some of the kids, they didn't know how to use those devices because, you know, you were in classroom, you're doing paper, you may did some assignments on your Chromebooks or whatever, but for the most part, you were using pencil and paper. So some of them didn't know how to mm. log in and I had parents messaging me, I can't get in on Zoom and I'm like, <laughs> wow. he tried, I don't know what to tell you because it's my first time using Zoom too, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, wow. Mm. So that'll be a time for us to be able to teach the kids how to use the, the devices and implement the curriculum. So, okay. oh. 
Oh, go ahead, April. I mean, Holly. I was just going to say, so <clears throat> just making sure I have it clear. So they're coming to school for those two weeks and then the rest of the, uh, I guess through the fall is going to be at home learning. Is, is mm -hmm. that correct? Okay. Correct. Right. Until whenever. Until, Until whenever. Corona okay. decides she's going to leave up out of here. <laughs> oh, wow. Corona be gone. Mm. Corona be gone. Corona be gone. The blood is upon you. The blood is upon you. <laughs> oh, so, Kaya, let me ask this because you teach, um, you're teaching at very, very, very developmental, like, you're teaching the kindergartners. That's like mm. the most, kindergarten and daggum senior year is your most important years as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that's such a developmental stage. I feel so bad for my niece that she's missing out on that, that that experience but oh. how does that work for these babies that are like five and six using are they using chromebooks and stuff like that as well um k2 they're gonna give them ipads to use okay. and the student we had ipads in the classroom so the kids knew how to use them i had one little boy smart kid he knew how to get on youtube he was fascinated with vacuum cleaners he oh knew how God. to get on YouTube okay. and Google Dirt Devil Vacuum Cleaners. You know what? <laughs> wow. oh and he would tell me everything about those vacuum cleaners. So the kids, they pretty much know how to use the technology. Okay. If okay. you can get online and create a TikTok video, yeah. this is you true. can log this in to do your work. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. You this can log true. in and do your work. You mm -hmm. can create all these TikTok videos. That's true. Wow. <laughs> Mm. Oh, that old tickety talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, wow. So but I'm interested to see how it's gonna work um, with kindergarten because yeah. kindergarten is you need to be hands on with those kids. Um, they need the social emotional learning, as April mm -hmm. was talking about. They need to be around other kids. They need to learn how to share. And yes. so mm -hmm. it it's gonna be tough, but parents. You got to put in, got to put in the work because yeah. this year, yeah. there's no grace wow. and mercy this year. The grades going to count for the older kids, so. Mm. Right, yeah, wow. it's going to count. And see, that's, that's the crazy thing, too. Like, I'm praying for the parents. I'm praying for myself. Mm. Pray for me, Tanya. <laughs> I'm Ooh, praying for you, too. Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying for you, too. Stretch your you hands. To and then, the stretch. yeah, y'all stretch your hands. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ooh, shut up, shut up. But yeah, because I'm sitting here thinking, I'd have already talked to my boss. Because I don't know the parents who don't have the option to work from home. That's where the, yeah. the kids, see, I've already talked to my boss and I, I talked to him. I said, look, I need a way to clock in, clock out from home. Um, I need to, like, you know, we just don't really have to already prepare for what, no matter which way it goes, whether they do something like a, a plan B plus or they do plan C where it's a hundred percent online. I need to be home. And so, yeah. but for the parents who like, like Tanya was saying, don't are not going to be able to be home. Going to have grandma in them at the house and grandma, grandma ain't going to be able to help, <laughs> you, know? Mm. you know, as much, but you know what? It can be learned. I, I think this is a time for the parents to not feel helpless. But we're just really going to have to pull up and, and say, all right, mama, daddy, if y'all going to be watching the kids, let me show you how mm -hmm. to work this technology yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to be using Zoom. I know they're going to be using this. So let me show you now how to do this. And yeah. then they can take it from there because, you know, parents, we just going to put our big girl and big boy panties on and, 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 and draws on and just do the thing mm -hmm. because, like you said, yeah. there ain't gonna be no grace and mercy. The grades will count because we can't keep going without yeah. making sure the kids are being educated, yeah. and we can't make Rona do what we want her to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I got a question, Tanya. So, um, and I don't know if you guys have talked about this or if they even talked about it. And that sits how long me. God bless you for watching. Mm, um, I done checked out and got the got the yeah. uh, the cliff notes on that. I want but, the answers. Uh, <laughs> I need to know. 
<laughs> did they speak about anything as it pertains to uh, PPE and like what type of things that you know, like protection yeah. and things of that this nature? Like, ask, yeah. okay, when the when the kids are going through that two week um, onboarding, so to speak, like, are they going to do some type of like if they they just talk about what that's going to look like as it pertains to protecting the safety of you guys as teachers as well as protecting the safety of the kids with the mm -hmm. social distancing and wearing the mask and all that stuff. As of now, I have not heard a concrete plan as how that will be happening. Um, they did say, of course, try kids six feet apart, everyone's wearing masks, um, trying to keep the schools clean, but some of the schools are old. The ventilation system mm. is, I mean, they're old. <laughs> you don't have no. windows to open up the windows, get fresh air. Yeah. So, mm. um, I'm not sure as to <clears throat> how they're implementing that. Um, mm -hmm. they did have another board meeting today, I checked oh, out wow. on that <laughs> one. <but. laughs> Some mm. of the teachers were expressing their concerns that they don't want to go back to school. They're uh -huh. afraid to go back to school because, you know, some of them have underlying health conditions. Some of mm -hmm. them are taking care of parents. They don't want to bring it home to their elderly parents, their kids. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he gave us power, love, and a sound mind. <laughs> yeah. Come on. We need to use wisdom when we make yes. these decisions Come on that we make in sound judgment, not just because you want to do something, you feel that, okay, it's, it's, it's safe to go back to school, but y'all yeah. having board meetings via Zoom, y'all mm. not in a building. Come on. Come on. But now. you having your board Talk meeting wow. via Zoom, but you feel it's okay for everybody to be back. Mm. Wow. And and that's the funny that's that's so important because I used to say this all the time as a social worker. The people who make the decisions mm. in Raleigh and in the state or whatever the case may be, you're not the person yep. going knocking on people's doors, going into mm -hmm. people's homes while you say this is okay to do. Yeah. You're sitting in an office. Matter of fact, you're sitting in an office at your house in your pajamas. Mm -hmm. It's easy to make these decisions when you're not directly impacted. Absolutely. It's, it's the teachers that are on the front line, you know, yeah. uh, it's these essential workers that are still having and being required to, you know, essentially put themselves at risk. Yeah. Because you think it's a good idea. Yeah. And my thing too is like, how are they going to, because it seemed like I did read an article where they were going to give the students masks, but I could be wrong. But even with, with that, it's like, um, how are y'all going to police the children? Because especially right. the little ones, they ain't going to have no mask on. They'll be ripping it off, yeah. acting yeah. the fool. Just Throwing around I'm the telling you, ain't nobody, they're not going to, you know. Right. So just that whole dynamic, and that is scary within itself because children are Petri dishes. With the, I mean, Petri just... Petri dishes. So it's like, nasty, nasty. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, you know, it, they might not, you know, get sick from it, but they may be able to carry it home to a loved one or so it's really, it, it's something. Yeah. But, yes. Man. Cause Mason, he's, he does not like wearing a mask. Yeah. And so when we go out, I make sure that we in and out because he does not <laughs> like wearing it. And yeah. trying, like you said, they're going to be twirling it, slinging it, throwing <laughs> it. Ooh, it your mask. Can we switch masks? Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Aaron, John, I mean, they was snack time. They sharing snacks. Oh, I mean, yeah, right. you know, Ooh. Let's trade this. Ooh, ooh, can I have that? I can give you one of these. Mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. They God. twirling right. it, slinging it, throwing it, flipping it, no, turning no, it. No kind no, of I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> All up in each other's face, sneezing, face, coughing yeah. on each other. Yes, <laughs> and, and the younger kids, they don't have no concept of social distancing. Yeah. They want to be hugged. They, mm -hmm. they like to hug. Yeah. They like to yeah. touch you. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. It is expectation. You know, some mm -hmm. teachers, that's how they communicate with their kids. When they come in the classroom, excuse me, they do hug them. Yeah. You know, so it's, 
it's uh it's a lot it's know. just so weird like man not being able to hug and, <laughs> and then trying to explain to the, the babies why you can't high five them and why you can't hug them yeah. without making them scared to death you know but one thing I will commend, uh, commend Charlotte Mecklenburg. At least y'all are only doing two weeks to yeah, initiate yeah. and then letting them go home. That that that's I think that's a beautiful uh, uh, alteration to the original yeah. plan. So. Mm. And it seems like you know I know CMS gets a bad rap. You know in this area, April. Um, we know you're a couple of hours away far away from us but um you know cms schools doesn't always get the best you know publicity so to speak but it seems like in this instance they did try to come up with um a definite plan for the teachers and i do think it's one of those things where no one's gonna everything is not gonna be met for everybody somebody's still gonna be right. po so you know it's kind of like you just gotta do what you gotta do now your people, April, <laughs> you need to yeah. you need to let your voice be known because uh Boo Boo, it is 721. Yeah. School starting next County. month. What y'all waiting uh. on? Come, come on, Nash County. Come on, Hello, Nash County. Out. If you hear us, respond. <laughs> respond. <laughs> Somebody make a decision, please. Yeah. Make a decision. Like, how y'all not if if you don't have enough guts to make a decision just use the one that's already been implemented yeah. go plan b there it's done for you because mm -hmm. like that's so last minute it to is. still be kind of in limbo about what you're doing yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's crazy because um some of it is unfortunately everything uses always underlying money or politics mm -hmm. you know it becomes political or it's about funding um we I have a county that my, the county my dad lives in is only thirty minutes away from me, but that county's already made the decision to do a hundred percent um online. Nobody's stepping, nobody's stepping foot back. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I know uh, a young lady who teaches at a college. We have a a, a college called West End. They're going back back. Wow. To I mean, on campus. Mm. in classrooms and I was very shocked wow. very mm. um and and and, uh, and so <clears throat> has to do with funding mm. and, and 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 grants and different things you know wow. it's just uh yeah mm. what do you think Tanya about um about co-ops um like I know for the homeschool people, they like this is what we've been doing. But right. you know, <laughs> they they flexing right now. But do you guys um, or have you guys thought about anything as far as like co-ops for those parents or any resources for maybe the parent that's like I have to work, but hmm. they they want to kind of make sure that the kids get what they need. Um, have you heard anything about co-ops, you know, through like, I know the Y was doing some stuff or trying yeah, to do so some stuff. To say, um, okay. The only one I know of is the YMCA. Um, so the parents can go online and check that out. Um, some of my colleagues, they're offering to do tutoring with the kids. So okay. um, parents, if you need tutoring, just reach out to your child's teacher and ask, do you know somebody who's doing tutoring who can help my child um doing remote learning um gotcha. yeah but check out the why that was the only one i heard the why i know my um and i don't know i know my pastor had posted something where he was just kind of trying to start a conversation about even churches trying to open up their doors and possibly trying to work with those parents Kind of like what the Y is doing, but you know, that's going to be like a mass effort. But it would really be so kingdom if they could kind of work together because this is what you guys have already stated. Some people are just not going to have the luxury to not work. Yeah, so true. And, and that's, that's the sad part. Like the baby shouldn't have to suffer because mm -hmm. mama got to put or parents got to put food and a roof over their head yeah you know all those things are important as much as their as well as their education mm -hmm. 
So right, true. Right, because if they the home life ain't good, you if right. you're not eating at home, mm-hmm. then how you then how do we expect the kids to come to school and learn? Focus, they, right? Dealing with yeah. other, you can't focus if you're hungry. Yeah. So, so okay. Yeah. <laughs> got that right. <laughs> so yeah, wow. it's, it's a lot, and I understand the parents that have to work. I understand that. So it's gonna take a village. Just mm, yeah, yeah. It's gonna take a village. Just pull on whoever, you, whosoever will. <laughs> Let them come. Whosoever will help the kids yeah. out. Help the kids no. out. <laughs> Absolutely. In in your professional opinion. And I hope this question doesn't uh, add this ask. Do you feel like the solution that has been provided through the state, through our governor, as well as through the system that you're a part of, what are your thoughts about it? Do you think it could have been better? Do you think it could have it could have been enhanced? Are you okay with it? Would it have been something that you would have put in place if, if the decision was time to make? If the decision was mine, we staying home because <laughs> Corona's still in these streets. Yeah. And here in Mecklenburg County, these cases still increasing. Yeah. Uh, whether people know it or not, these cases still increasing. And yeah, yeah I've mm. seen two daycares um, in cases with the kids. Yeah. So, oh no! Um, if it was up to me, yeah. But I do understand the two weeks being able to get the kids. Um, implementing having them to be able to learn how to use the system Mm -hmm. to be able to log on to do the work i understand that and so i'm like if i do have to go do i take these two weeks cover me in the blood jesus no (laughs) no yeah (laughs) yeah but as from tanya if i would chose remote only everybody stay home is mason does mason have to go for those two weeks, or is he exempt because he's a second grader? Um, Mason, his school is in Cabarrus County. He goes to a charter okay. school. So charter okay. schools there, um, they can their decision making is they can decide what they want to do. Um, as like April, his school um, hasn't made a decision yet, but they told July the twenty fourth is when they're going to make their decision. But his school in the past, with the decisions that they make, I'm pretty sure they'll make the right decision because before we even got the notification on Sunday that we weren't going back to school, Mason school on that Friday, I get an email, (laughs) school will not open back up for two weeks. So they were already prepared. So (laughs) thank God. Shout out to Carolina International Charter School. (laughs) 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 But yeah, they were already prepared. I got that email. I was like, okay, Mason's not going back to school for two weeks. And then it turned into the rest of the school year. So, Wow. Wow. Having, um, just talking about like the emotional and the mental piece that April brought up, that how the kids are being impacted. Like I know Mason's an only child and you know, April, Matthew, there's a there's kind of a gap between him and his brother, but there is another child in the home. Mm-hmm. What are you doing or what have you done to just kind of keep him still socialized? Um, you know, so that he doesn't have uh depression and anxiety because I've heard of some friends that have kids, you know, and I'm talking under 10, under 11, that are having anxiety about going mm-hmm. out. Um, wow. I saw this little Facebook post that it was a, uh, it was cousins. They were cousins, it was a boy and a girl, and it looked like they were like 11 or 12, and they hadn't seen each other in like so many months because mm-hmm. everything happened, and the parents were keeping, you know, everybody was doing the whole social distancing, and their family captured them um seeing each other for the first time and they hugged honey them babies broke down started crying i started oh, crying i was like oh, oh lord no. and i'm talking about ugly cry like <laughs> like ugly cry. Oh, ugly, ugly cry ugly cry because they wow. hadn't seen each other and it's like family and mm-hmm. so you know these kids are being impacted in ways that they probably can't even articulate because yeah. they are children 
So what measures have you and Rodney put in place being that he's the only child? Um, his, his teacher, um, she was able to Zoom with them. So they did Zoom. He was able to see some of his friends. And he did say he missed going to school because he missed his yeah. friends. Um, mm -hmm. He was able to video chat with my with his cousins, my nieces, and him and my niece. They get on playing Roblox. They video chat each other. Then they get on not Roblox, Minecraft, and they my play a video yeah. game together. And they mm -hmm. they talking to each other. <laughs> so he's able to connect with her, even though okay. she's in another city. Okay. Um, but we check in, I ask him, you know, how you feeling? How you doing? Because, mm -hmm. um, what was it? Last week he had to go to the doctors for his yearly checkup. And he was like, I, that night before, he was like, I don't want to go to the doctor with coronavirus. Oh. <laughs> oh. His anxiety level was so high. I was like, Mason, you'll oh, be wow. right. I'm like, you're at the doctor, you'll be safe. And he came in my room, bedroom, five o'clock that morning. The oh day, it was time God. for us mm. to go to the doctor. And he just got in my bed and just wanted to stay there. I'm like, boy, it is five o'clock in the morning. Why are you <laughs> up? And he was still saying he didn't want to go to the doctor. I'm wow. like, Mason, you'll be fine at the doctor. They have ventilation systems in there. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the air's clean in there. So, <laughs> Yeah. You'll be okay, and yeah. it won't take long. We'll be in and out. So, um, yeah, he's able to be your chat with um, my nieces. Um, we were able to go down and visit my family um, Father's yeah. Day weekend. So, and me and Mason, we stayed down there for two weeks. So he was oh, okay. Oh, and Grandma, no. yeah, and his cousin, <laughs> yeah, and um. We have a friend who has two boys, so, and they, you know, like us, we ain't doing all this, we ain't going out or do all that, and so he was able to, you know, they take the boys to the park, let them run around to the park, so mm -hmm. he was able to see some mm -hmm. of his friends. So. Friends, okay, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. I need to get um, some friends from Matt now. I got to find somebody with boys, because I have nieces, um, four nieces, um, they're yeah, they're all kind of all around. Uh, one is one uh, one year older than Matt. The other one is maybe two years younger. But you know, he be wanting another boy to play with and talk to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find. I, I'm gonna have to find a community. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, a community for uh, Matt. A, a, a safe community. You know, yeah. where, you know that be they washing their hands and doing what they supposed to do and not running every which to wear. But um, <laughs> my um, Matthew asked me, he said, when, when is Corona going to go home? I was like, oh, I, guess, my. When? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is she going on? Where is your home? Um, tell me. The, the pit of hell. <laughs> 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 I, I meant to back to the pits, right? No, I'm telling <laughs> you. Oh, uh, man. But, but thank God he's actually with uh, I think the blessing was, I said, God, I just thank you that it didn't get so bad that all the states were closing their borders because he was able to go there. He's with his dad and his dad's stepson is like a little bit older than him, like around, you know, the age and they live in a neighborhood with other kids and stuff. So that, that was a blessing because I was like, if he hadn't been able to go to uh, his dad's, it would have been really rough this summer. Mm -hmm. Really rough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm wow. I'm glad that they were they didn't because in the beginning I thought they were kind of going to be closing off borders and I was like oh god mm. um, and I, I started having anxiety like geez can't go no <laughs> can't go can't nowhere, go nowhere. <laughs> like wow. nowhere but look but the food line in Walmart right yeah he, he across <laughs> the state you mm. know or you know that was that was like. Uh, crazy thankfully we live in such an awesome state that mm -hmm. we are a, a border state so we we border the ocean but yeah. then we have the mountains you know a lot of states mm -hmm. don't have that so it's so much to even be seen within the state of north carolina so i've yeah. been trying to explore my hometown you know and do things not my hometown but my home state and like venture now and trying to do things within the state that I probably would have never thought about doing because I'm so let's go. You know, I was supposed to be in California this month and, and I had 
plans to be in Africa at the end of the year. And I'm going to be right here <laughs> in these United <laughs> States of America because ain't nobody letting us come in. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> we <hell>. paying. <laughs> I'm telling you. Everybody putting up walls. We been right. right. Yeah. <laughs> the irony. The irony. Ain't that <laughs> something? <laughs> Come on. Look at y'all. You know. Look. Honey. Mm. It, it, it comes Woo. back around. It comes does. Around. I'm telling you. Yeah, but that was interesting with the children because a lot of times, you know, in this whole crisis, I have been thinking more on an adult level and just to see a lot of adults experiencing anxiety and depression. So when you think about the children and how much more fragile they are, mm -hmm. like when you said that, and you know, and, and then I remember watching a video on Facebook. It was it was funny, but the little girl was serious. She was talking about the ice cream truck. Have, did, have right, seen yes. Everything is shut you. down. She, she was wanted, crying. She was upset. She said she wanted to go to real church. When they give out snacks. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's right, baby. <laughs> she was like, everything oh, closed. Can't man. go to McDonald's. She was, I can't go play in the ball. Like, yeah. she was distraught. I'm telling you. And just showing them how to be able to manage that, even with their, you know, their lack of understanding of really what's going on. And so that's just, just adding something to my prayer list. That's all. Yeah, it yeah. is because mm -hmm. it's like now we have to teach our kids um, about fear yeah. and, and anxiety yeah. at such a young yes. age. Like like you were saying, how Mason was like, I don't, I don't want to go out because mm -hmm. because it's so it's so inundated. My niece is five, and you know I was like, Are you ready to start school? And she's like, I can't go to school, Auntie, because of the coronavirus. And I was like, they know this stuff. Yeah. They're so aware. And, yeah. and they, they're very aware. And so it's like, it, it just is so sad. It is. Yeah. I, mm. I feel like we got to be real intentional with that whole fear thing. Like, yes. mm -hmm. not trying to tell nobody what to do, but parents, right. watch how much mm. CNN, don't just have CNN yeah. on all day. You know, don't just news, 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 because your kids are in the house with you. They're consuming all that. That's this right. They're mm -hmm. consuming all of that. So, you know, I had to be very intentional. Now, my other caveat is my poor child be watching Power Rangers all day. And all these other, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I need to do better. Uh, he, I'm telling you, like watching every cartoon. And cartoons are weird nowadays, too. But anyway. You know, new honey, they, it's be like Bunny and, uh, honey, they be trying to put yeah. some agendas in there come on yeah. come on flags yeah. around all mm. around but um yeah so <laughs> just yeah yeah we gotta be that's that social emotional yes it's yes definitely because like when sweet was talking about her sister yelling at the kids yeah i found myself <laughs> yelling and mason like mommy you don't have to yell at me like, wow. hey Mason, well, if you do it when I ask you to do it, when I have to yell. <laughs> and then right. I started up uh, up again the next yeah. day, but I caught myself in the middle of it. And he was like, wow. Mom, thank you for trying not to yell. Oh. So I had to take that into oh, consideration. Hey, oh, you oh you Mason is pressing. <laughs> He has Tell pressed him. his feelings. <laughs> wow. He has pressed his feelings. I was like, okay. That was a reality check for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I need to uh, take care of my mental because I'm just yeah. popping off at him, just yelling at him, and that's affecting him. He he don't want to be wow. yelled at. I, he's like, okay, mommy, you, you don't have to yell. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Right. But I'm like, you didn't do it the first time I asked mm -hmm. you to do it, so that's right. why I yelled at you. But wow. yeah, you definitely have to check in with the kids. It's mm -hmm. funny because, um, oh, go ahead, Holly. Oh, no, I'm just imagining the stress of the parents, you know, that have had to homeschool and they're working at the same time, you know, that just managing that and your own mental health, like you said, that's, yeah, Oof. I'm just thinking about that, but go ahead. So we <laughs> no, I was thinking about that too, because like I was thinking about my sister and I, I saw how you know, with three kids under under five in the house. Oh my God. And you know, and one being a baby, I mm. was like, girl, I get it. So she I would always hear her telling my niece, when the teacher asks you 
Does do 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 she have to keep telling you the same thing? Oh. I, now, I would too, laugh. Mason. I would Ooh. laugh because I know it's true. Wow. And I was telling my sister, I was like, the difference in between you and the teacher, and I say this not being arrogant or whatever, because I understand that I don't have kids. And she does good. And I think she did do good under the circumstances, like like Tanya was saying parents were thrust into this yeah. you know it was like one day i'm reading books to you to check off your little homework list next i'm doing whole virtual mm. packets and teaching you know wow. but i used to tell her i said you're gonna have to put her in a routine i said the reason why the teacher only has to say it once is because the kids have a routine mm. they know when they come to school they take off their coat they go wash their hands they sit down she like you gonna have to tell her when you come in the house, you take off them shoes, you put them in the corner. Like kids thrive off a routine. Mm -hmm. And I know your routine has been messed up because now you're like mommy and teacher, but it's just a lot. It's a lot. It's like you said, Holly, I'm, my mm -hmm. heart goes out for, yeah. for the Aprils and the Tanyas and, mm -hmm. and the people, especially those who do not have you know my my baby sister she doesn't have the option to not go to work yeah. she, she can't work from home that's not that's not a part she works for the bank mm. so that's essential you yeah. you got to be there so it's like mm. it's a lot it's a lot wow. yeah. well thank <laughs> you so much tanya for, yeah. for being a part of this conversation um, I think it's been very good. It's been very enlightening to yeah. actually hear from someone who is literally on the front lines and, you know, from the Truth Reveal uh, family. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for not just for you, but yes. for all teachers. Y'all the heroes, the teachers, yeah. and these <laughs> that doctors and nurses. These yeah. essential workers, the people that work at the gas station, the people that, you know, the stuff that you, that we are exposed to that has not stopped. And I think, yeah. you know, it's, it's making people be more appreciative mm -hmm. of the impact and the role that teachers play in society. Yes. I've always known the impact and felt like I've always known the impact that a teacher plays. But when you think about the fact that this woman or man is with your child, what eight hours out of the day influencing them and yeah. impacting their lives for the for the pennies on the dollars that they receive yeah, that's a whole nother conversation pay the teachers more pay the teachers more pay the teachers more pay the teachers more they're they're not being compensated on the level of yeah. output that they're putting out because they're literally shaping the future mm -hmm. so we appreciate you guys yes. who are who are family who have families and children of your own and you're still choosing to take some the extra risk to make sure that the children of America still have what they need to yes. succeed and be great and awesome citizens. So thank you so yes. much. Um, thank you. Yay. yay. So and thank <laughs> you for having me. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> So what we normally do is we go in and give final words and um, we'll start with you. Any final words, any any last last things that you want to say to the listeners or for those who may listen? Uh, I guess my <laughs> final words would be um, encouragement to the parents. Um, I know it's going to be hard. I know it's tough. But hang in there, stay with it, work with the kids. Like I said, it's going to take a village. So find you a village, someone yeah. that you can talk to mm -hmm. yeah. who can help those kids. Um, do those mental check-ins with yourself and yes. with the kids. Because your mental state is very important. If this ain't good, then I can't be good for nobody else. So That's right. Check in. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. Awesome. Stay prayed up. We we praying Corona. Hurry up and leave a patty. Yes. Yes. Go home. Go home, Corona. <laughs> Go on now. Get. And parents, now I I know the kids are out for the summer, but 
try to do some things with them. Um, for my younger oh. kids, you can go to the Dollar Tree, Target, the Dollar <laughs> section that have the little workbooks. So yeah. Yeah. they can do something, read, yeah. have them to read. There are plenty of reading apps that are online that the the kids can read online and the apps are read it to the kids so oh wow yeah yeah get, yeah. get them kids awesome. going now get them going yeah. now yeah and it don't have to be every day like mason i make him do some work yeah you're gonna do some work i know it's summer but she actually will <laughs> need that mind to keep going yeah. yeah i need you to stay educated so you don't get behind so yeah we're gonna do some yeah. work so you're gonna yeah. read so yes, and read Charlotte. That's a program for kids. You can read. Um, like I said, there are plenty of apps out that help the kids to read and do math. So yeah, just get them started a little early. <laughs> Hang in there. Hang in there. I think, I <laughs> this too shall pass. Shall pass. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 All right, Holly. Lasting words. Yeah, I think she said it all, you know, patience, prayer, 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 um, and take care of yourself. And, um, you know, and I would also say not to be too hard on yourself. Like, you know, she was saying before, when you do have those moments where you're just like, I can't take it, (laughs) you know, (laughs) take a, you know, breather. And if you need to apologize to your child, apologize to them and keep it moving. (laughs) uh, Right. But yeah, that's what I would say. Just prayer, take care of yourself, be patient with yourselves. We're going to get through this together. Yeah. Miss Rivers. Yeah, um, my, yes, my last words is just to concur, Tanya and Holly. Hi, uh, Hi, 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 how are you? <laughs> truth revealed thank you guys so much for tuning in um please like us on facebook subscribe to us on youtube and share thank you so much tanya for being a part and just sharing your expertise and giving us um the insight and um for all of our followers and listeners we will um in our show notes get some of those um resources that tanya talked about some of those apps Um, that we will list in our show notes so that you can have some resources available to you um, if you don't know where to go just kind of get started with making sure that your child or the children that you love and are concerned about um, are getting the things that they need education wise until next time be good stay safe put your mask on and wash your hands (laughs) all right Bye. bye guys